So in this example, we're going to create two instances. Instance one is going to have VLAN one and VLAN two mapped to it. Instance two is going to have VLAN three mapped to it. We are going to make core one the root of instance one and core two the root of instance two. So let's start with core one. Telnet 10.1.1.101. Spanning tree has already been enabled, so I'm going to type the command stp region configuration to set up multiple spanning tree. The region name is going to be hp. Notice in lower case. The revision number is going to be 1. Instance 1 is going to have vlan 1 and 2 allocated to it. Instance 2 is going to have VLAN 3 allocated to it. I'm going to make this configuration active on this switch. Now notice I lose my connectivity to the switch. Spanning tree has to do a recalculation. So it would have been better to telnet to the remote switches first. But I'd like to show you the A-series configuration before showing you the configuration on other switches. So I'm now able to telnet back to the switch. So there's core one. Display STP shows me that this switch is the root of the local spanning tree, but the spanning tree for the entire topology is another switch. Let's configure core two. So telnet 10.1.1.102. STP region configuration. It's important that everything be configured exactly the same. So it makes sense to do this configuration in Notepad and copy it onto the devices. Revision number is 1. Instance 1 has VLAN 1 and 2 mapped to it. Instance 2 has VLAN 3 mapped to it. I'm going to make the configuration active. Once again, spanning tree is recalculating, so I've lost connectivity. Now before going any further, I want to configure the priorities of these switches. So notice I have connectivity back to core 2. On core 1, I'm going to say STP instance 1 root primary to make this switch the root of instance 1. STP instance 2 root secondary will make this switch the secondary root for instance 2. On core 2, I'm just going to swap that around. So STP instance 1 root secondary, STP instance 2 root primary. So core 1 is the root of the first instance. Core 2 is the secondary of the first instance, but it's the root of the second instance. Core 1 is the secondary root of the second instance. So on core 2, as an example, display current configuration. Notice STP instance 1 has this switch set as the secondary root. Instance 2 has the switch set as the primary root. We can see the STP configuration. So display STP instance 1 shows me that this switch is the secondary root. Instance 2 shows me that this switch is the primary root. The last step is to configure multiple spanning tree on the two pro curve switches. So, firstly on edge 1, show run shows me that we've just got basic spanning tree enabled. But now we're going to type spanning tree. And notice we have these options, config name and config revision. So config name we're going to set to HP. 
config revision, we're going to set to one. Spanning tree instance one is going to have VLAN one and two mapped to it. Spanning tree instance two is going to have VLAN three mapped to it. So show run shows me my spanning tree configuration. We're going to do something similar on edge two. So spanning tree config name is HP. Spanning tree config revision is one. Spanning tree instance one VLAN one and two. Notice the switch hangs. This switch was the root previously and is now no longer the root. So there's a recompute of the spanning tree algorithm. You can see I've lost my connection to the switch. Let's ping 10.1.104. So spanning tree has successfully recomputed. Show run shows me that I've configured my first instance. So now let's complete the configuration by configuring instance two with VLAN three. Once again, I've lost my connection. While spanning tree is sorting itself out, let's complete the diagram again, showing the forwarding and blocking ports with the configuration we've now completed. Previously, if you remember, spanning tree was blocking this 20 gig link. This switch was the root. Let's see if spanning tree is better now. Let's look at call one, display STP brief. Now notice bridge aggregation one is still discarding, but that's on instance zero. It's forwarding on instance one and it's forwarding on instance two. So let's change the priority for instance zero. So STP instance zero root primary. It's a good thing to remember that you still need to configure spanning tree for instance zero. So in this example, you can now see that the port is forwarding. On core two, STP instance zero root secondary. Display STP brief. Now on both switches, all ports are forwarding. You can see the roles are either designated or root. So for all instances, all ports are forwarding on both these switches. So previously this port was blocking, but now it's forwarding. All ports are forwarding on both core switches. Let's have a look at edge one. So on edge one, show spanning tree. You can see that it's blocking on port 11. If we look at instance one, notice it's blocking on port 11. But if we look at instance two, it is forwarding on port 11. So with multiple spanning tree, you need to look at individual instances. Let's do the configuration for instance one. So on instance one, port one and two are forwarding and port 11 is blocking. So thus far, that's the topology for instance one. Let's look at edge two and see which ports are forwarding and blocking. So on edge two, show spanning tree instance one. Notice in this case, port one is blocking, but port two and 11 are forwarding. So that's what the topology looks like for instance one. That's a lot better than it was previously. As an example, if PC2 was sending traffic to a server on core one, 
it would send the traffic directly via edge 1 to core 1. If PC3 was sending traffic to a server on core 1, the traffic would go directly via edge 2 to core 1. So that's very efficient. Now if traffic was going to a server on core 2, assuming that that server is in VLAN 2, traffic would flow from edge 1 to core 1, but would then traverse the 20 gig link between these two switches to get to core 2. So this is not going to become a bottleneck. It's important to realize, however, that for instance 2, the core switches swap roles. Core 2 becomes the root and Core 1 becomes the backup root. So let's look at Edge 2 as an example and you'll see that the blocking and forwarding ports have been swapped around. So that's once again the blocking and forwarding ports for Instance 1. Notice Port 1 is blocking. But if we look at Instance 2, Notice port 1 is forwarding, port 2 is forwarding, but port 11 is blocking. So these two ports swap roles because in instance 1, core 1 is the root, but for instance 2, core 2 is the root. So the topology becomes a mirror image. This port will be forwarding for instance 2, but this port is blocking for instance 2. This port is forwarding for instance 2 and this port is blocking for instance 2. A lot more efficient than what we had previously. It's very important once again that when configuring spanning tree you don't just allow spanning tree to use the defaults. You need to decide which switches are going to be the root and backup routes in your topology and you need to configure your switches accordingly. Don't let spanning tree decide by itself otherwise you may end up in a situation as we saw previously, where a 20 gigabit link is blocked in favor of a 100 meg link.